Hello and welcome to the second part of series about CNC machine Ultimate B. This time around I will show you how I assembled my machine kit as there isn't really much content to expand. First of all, like I said in the previous video, each axis is built pretty much the same as any other and can be simplified to a couple steps. Let me show you on one axis how to do it. The only difference is that Z axis uses smaller MGN rails and larger plate for the ball screw housing. Step 1. Attach linear rails to C beam. I have done this at the very beginning of the build for each axis. Step 2. Attach carriages onto linear rails, two on each rail. Do it carefully so you won't lose any ball bearings, while also making sure that greasing nut is facing outwards. Screw designated plate to the carriages. Step number three. Screw smaller plate to the ball screw, then insert it into C-beam. Step number 4. Tighten plates together while making sure some rubber damper is between them. Step number 5. Attach both floating and fixed end plates to a C-beam then attach bearing on both sides. Step number 6. Attach the motor to the ball screw using coupler. Of course this is a very simplified process that usually takes quite some time, but once you get the gist of it, you should be able to repeat this process fairly easily. So I am not going to repeat this in this video anymore. You will need to have a build guide opened anyways since it reference screw sizes for each element and I definitely don't want to list each screw I've used. I suggest starting with both Y axes as they will serve as a build base and while it's absolutely possible to assemble X axis before, it would be pretty hard to align the biggest aluminum plates of this machine afterwards. After assembling Y and Y2 axis, grab base extrusions. Keep in mind that the actual amount of them will vary depending on your machine size. For my 500x750 it was 4 extrusions that I have to attach underneath the boat Y axis. This was pretty tricky part, especially getting sliding T-nuts attached to each corner plate. Having magnetic screwdriver or magnetized Allen key will help tremendously. Start with inserting sliding nuts into both extrusion tunnels. Then screw them lightly. Repeat this process until all six holes are filled. This is where the magnetized tool will help as you will accidentally push the nut too far. Mounting bottom corner was a lot easier and pretty straightforward. 
You just have to make sure to pre-install sliding nuts as guides asks you to. Once you get the base done, make sure to space bottom extrusion evenly while trying to maintain each part squared. Don't worry about making it perfect just yet, as you will be making adjustments later on, so keep one side screws loose. This is because mounting X-axis will require you to move the loose Y side closer so that the aluminum black plates are tightly touching C-beam. Assembly of the X-axis is entirely the same as Y-axis with the exception that you will be mounting it to the big alu plates. Afterwards attach 4040 extrusion just behind the C-beam. Don't forget to pre-install T-nuts as guides asks you to because you won't be able to do so once you mount the both extrusions to the back plates. Now just to stiffen things up, you will be screwing in those black corners as shown in the video, while also making sure they are evenly spaced. This was actually pretty hard to do, especially at the bottom. So having proper iron keys with a rounded ball side will help a lot. Then you will be repeating assembly of the ball screw which was explained earlier. Nothing changes compared to the Y axis and you actually cannot make a mistake as motor fits only on one side. Same goes for side bearings. Now that you have your X axis assembled, attach big alu plate to linear rail carriages. Again, can't make mistake as only one of them fits. Last mechanical step is to assemble Z axis. Same procedure as Y and X axis. Small difference is that you will be using smaller linear rays and carriages, as well as wider coupler plate between the ball screw and the big plate. Once you get the Z axis done, all that's left is to make X and Z plates touch each other and tighten them together. This is it, your mechanical parts are assembled. I purposely did not say anything about spindle or electronics as you will have a plenty of options here and it's a material for another video. And those things aren't really necessary to make the finishing touches so mounting them right now will only hinder you. What I mean by finishing touches is making sure that linear rails, carriages and ball screws are all greased up. I used white synthetic grease. Just a heads up. Don't miss the sides of the linear rails as both X and Y axes will be using those surfaces to hang on, so to speak. Once I greased everything up, I actually attached stepper drivers to the entire machine to move all axes a couple of times back and forth to help spread the grease and align the router. Of course this won't make it perfectly square. You will still have to use builder square and some measurement tape to make sure the cross sections are equal and extrusions are square. Now that you have your CNC square, don't forget to tighten up the loose side. If it wasn't loose as the guy told you to, you will most likely have to repeat this process. This is it for today's video, hope you enjoyed this condensed building process. In the next video I will talk about wiring, stepper motor drivers, board and the choice of firmware. If you liked it, hit the subscribe button as it will help me get motivated to do more builds in the future.